There definitely is a lot of Paris life and culture in Arcane. I mean, I don't think it's a coincidence that uh, a lot of Piltover looks like Paris. Things are designed to be functional, but also to be a piece of art. I think that's something very much the French kind of spirit. Yeah, so this venue is actually where we had uh, Worlds a few years ago. It's cool because it was really close to our studio, and so we sent a bunch of people from Fortiche. It was just something really special to finally be able to share that with them. I think they were fans of the story, you know, and of the characters, but you kind of also have to experience like the buzz in the world around the game. On a tout de que c'était quand même le jeu, le jeu mondial et l'opportunité de faire quelque chose de, de, de très très bien. For us, Arcane was a big opportunity to show the viewers that we are, we are not only good to make trailer and, and music video. Ça part vraiment d'une un, intention euh, vraiment de plaisir, de passion de faire un, un film, enfin euh, une série, plus que de faire du marketing. If I'm confident about that, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I hope people are gonna be surprised. I think everybody on the project is out to prove something with what we're doing. And I firmly believe that you need to find someone who's kind of willing to bleed for like this thing they're trying to, to make. I don't think otherwise you're gonna really be bold. Otherwise you're not gonna really have anything where you're gonna risk something. And I think you have to risk something in order to make, to make something that, that makes an impact. Scene here at Fortiche about uh, what they call is a bit baby foot, right? Baby uh, foot. Bad foot, yes. yes. <laughs> mm. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> it's killing us too. <laughs> oh, there's the worthy goal. <laughs> Basically, the idea for this trip is to get into a room with the directors, the animators, the editors, and just brainstorm a bit together. Like, what would be the coolest version of this scene or this kind of episode? So you're just worrying about, like, it being too complex? My goals this whole time is, like, I want to solve the story beats with the team in Paris. It, it's just going to be great to be like, hey guys, here's all our awesome ideas, and then they tell us whether they can produce it or not, or steer us more into something achievable. It's not done till it's done, right? You know, it's like the, block of marble chiseling away uh, and occasionally you, you know knock off like an arm and have to start over if we ever proceed with a scene without taking in that input from the directors here it's worse you know because they're just so talented they always find this really creative spin Pascal has this amazing eye for character designs the models the stylization tu vois la cam je sais pas si on pouvait pas mettre une caméra qui tremble un peu là tu vois who is the why just uh, the man of shadow? Jerome, he's the invisible wizard at Fortiche. Today I, I want to, to create the lab to experiment new, new style for the future with Riot. I think when you think about the final look, that painterly look that's integrated into 3D, the super subtle, nuanced camera work where everything feels like it's handheld and really human and real, a lot of that is, is Jerome. Oh, Madonna. The engine with me, please. Okay. Uh, I want some VH in here. So, uh, <laughs> who is Arno? Who is Arno? Uh, ah, who is Arno? <laughs> he tells us, you know what I want is a psh, what I want is a, is a psh, you know what? And who is Arno? Who is <laughs> So this is the Arno model. So um, the hair is pretty detailed. Um, and then he doesn't have any pants. <laughs> And uh, they wanted to incorporate the three directors in the in the show. Happy Progress Day! <laughs> when Arnaud has like a crazy idea, the best thing you can do is just shut up and let him do his thing. Because like it tends to be just like that's when the, the cool shit happens, you know? <laughs> the 
<laughs> I loved that they added them as kids in there. It was not something we thought of on the uh, in the room. But it just added this level of emotion between them. <laughs> it honestly it's like, oh, I I feel like these characters could be in love now. <laughs> This sequence is uh, in every way, technically, artistically, and it's, uh, I don't know how to say that, uh, yeah, the, I mean, masterpiece of yeah. the world season. Yeah. This particular image to me is just like the combination, you know, Hextech is art and science. And I think that's exactly what I feel like the Voltiche depiction is, you know, it is, I feel the science, I feel the power, I feel the energy, but I also feel the beauty. What I also uh, at Voltiche, is that on insuffle la, la vision de départ et euh, tout le monde met euh, son petit sa pierre à l'édifice sa pierre à l'édifice comme on dit <rire> enfin so basically this board is all the steps that happen in Fortiche after we receive the script we go to the design phase which basically is doing design for character props and background En l'occurrence, ce bateau-là, il a été euh, fabriqué par euh, Victor. Et en fait, euh, mettre en scène ce bateau, c'est une manière de montrer que tout petit déjà, Victor était un génie. Then everything goes in storyboard. In the storyboard department, we take the scripts and we work with the, the directors. We try to build something that is not there yet in the script. But there's also the editing that is working at the same time on the to really find the, the good timing for the boards. As an editor, my job is to assemble those storyboards together into what we call animatic. And then while that's happening, you're recording the dialogue with the talent. I love a good conundrum. Hammer forging is such a delicate art. Shimmer is rampant in the Undercity attacks at the Hex Gates and in the Academy Square. Yeah, but I, I said I already called it. You can't do... I called dibs. We get voices from the actors and then we cut them with sound effects and temp music in order to see the movie and see how it works. We're watching full-on storyboard animatics with the voice actors in there. Vander learns none of this. No worries there. Powder took care of the evidence. I tried, okay? So we were able to watch the whole season from start to finish before we animated the rest of the episodes. You did this? I mean, honestly, on every aspect, we were afraid of this moment in the episode because it's not always easy to, like, get these like really raw emotional performances from really young actors. And so Mia Jeunesse, who cast for Powder, I remember going into the VO session and being like, all right, today we're gonna make a 11, 12 year old girl cry. Um, let's see how that goes. I am rolling on this. She left me. She is not my sister anymore. I remember all of us in the booth just like being shocked by how good she is and, and, and just being in tears at the end of the, you know, uh, takes. And I think we got it. <laughs> yeah. I got the job when I was 10 and I'm almost 16, you know, <laughs> so it's been a while. Why did you leave? <laughs> because you're a jinx! Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> to get into that place of vulnerability was hard for me. Hi! Bye, come back! Please come back! Please, my little... I need you, please! I have a little brother who is my best friend in the entire world. We get upset when we don't see each other for like more than three days. I, I, I can't imagine a world where he isn't in it. Where's the... Oh, you're back! <laughs> Thinking about what that would be like if something had happened that made it so that we couldn't bounce back. Next thing I knew, it was all just 
coming to the surface. I only wanted to help. I only wanted to help. I only wanted to help. I, only I told you to stay away. When it comes to siblings, they're your blood. And when you don't have family, what do you have? You've got a good heart. Don't ever lose it. No matter how the world tries to break you. Quand on entendait les voix, on se disait « Ah, tiens, peut-être qu'on peut avoir euh, vraiment quelque chose de, de, de particulier, de, de, de beaucoup plus euh, subtil et euh, beaucoup plus profond, en fait, au niveau, au niveau de l'actine. Et... » I always knew you'd come back. What's going on Quand on entendait les voix, on se disait « Ah, on peut peut-être aller vers du Scorsese, plutôt. » All the main characters were really scary to cast because, I mean, you were not just making a new character. It was like, oh yeah, there was like, whatever, six years of, you know, a hundred gazillion million people who have very specific expectations and opinions about who these characters are. So don't f it up. Wow, super boring. Jinx took us the longest of all characters. I think we looked for the Jinx actress, I think for roughly three years. She's so beloved, and her voice is so specific. For a while, we were like, can we find someone who can do this? The hard thing was that we had to find someone who can do both the intimate and quiet moments that are just like these really vulnerable acting moments. But at the same time, we also needed an actress who can also do the really loud moments that Jinx is really known for. And you typically can find one or the other. I remember we were at a point where it was just, we've been looking for so long, we, we kind of just went through all of the LA catalog of talent. Let's just pick one and just go. And it was just this like, no, we can't. And at some point, through the help of some casting folks, we found Ella. Hi. And I mean, it was like the pearly gates just opened. Well, look who it is. The boy savior. I felt this like really deep connection with her because of empathy and compassion, you know, on compassionate grounds. Like, yes, she's a, a terrible person. She's done all these terrible things. But is she a terrible person? Like, I don't know. I started to realize like she, who she's become, this jinx that she's become is just a deeply rooted, very difficult trauma response that she's developed because she's gone through things no one should ever have to go through. <laughs> no, no, it was a mistake. Oui, c'est vrai que l'acting, la, la, je pense, dans Ar Arkane est euh, bien plus poussé que dans la plupart des shows euh, d'animation. Parce que euh, notre envie, c'est plutôt de faire essayer de, bah, de, 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 de vraiment copier ces acteurs et, et, le, et le casting, des fois, à influencer même les designs des personnages et, et leurs attitudes. Quoi. In parallel of the storyboard, we are going in a background and cara props fabrication. At the beginning, we work in the same time with animation, so sometimes it's difficult to, to know exactly the position of the character. Now we can see the 2D with a black and white. I don't paint because there is still co. <laughs> enfin, moi, ce que je préfère, c'est l'évolution des personnages dans les histoires et, et elle, elle a vraiment une évolution. Je pense que c'est pour ça que c'est mon personnage préféré. Puis j'aime bien son côté un peu folle et, et en même temps elle est pas si folle que ça. Pas si méchante. Ouais. So we've got designs and from there we just build it in 3D. Ouais. Yeah, it's very simple <laughs> to explain. So here we made we made the Atlas Gauntlet and uh, the most difficult part was there is a lot of tiny parts who work together. So before it gets to the rigging department, we have to be sure it works first. Like we have all the tiny pieces, you know, you see here. So it was engineered precisely <laughs> to work like that. So uh, it's a part of the fun, but uh, it's part of the headache too. It's actually really fun to create like all those intricate pieces, like you know the the, the leg and the, the feet of uh, Victor, all those 
weird metallic parts blending with the body. This was the design for the hands. Then I modeled something like this, and then I gave it to the texture department, and they painted it so it looks like that. All the process is built around the idea of bringing the design to the final image. And, and that's great because this is actually like the design is just brought back in 3D and it's actually what the designer thought of. Bah là, je vous présente en fait ce que c'est un rig, le, le, le rig de marionnette. C'est vraiment des joints, des joints, des os fictifs qu'on qu met en place. Donc c'est des points de pivot qu'on qu peut faire tourner avec des, avec des mains. On a une équipe d'animateurs qui, tel, qui est tellement forte que, qu et ils vont trouver, euh, je sais pas, trois, euh, quatre idées pour rajouter de la vie au personnage. And then we are going at layout stage and they start, you know, to do the staging and the camera movement. On essaye de traduire le, le storyboard en 3D et euh, de, de transmettre en fait des émotions juste avec une caméra, on, avec les mouvements de caméra, avec la focale qu'on va choisir, de trouver des jolis cadrages et de trouver le rythme aussi euh, de l'animation. And then it goes to animation. T'as le flanc de mouise avant où il va partir. Il part et puis. Sur le départ, en fait, il se fait, euh, il se fait tomber. T'as pas besoin d'avoir une grande distance, mais juste sentir. If you go in a dictionary, like animation is a giving life to something. Being animated, you know, it's just like uh, get get the passion of something as well. And us, we are like the, the puppet, puppet master, <laughs> the puppeteer. <laughs> No motion capture. No motion capture. No? <laughs> Please, let, this, let people know that. Know that. I mean, why not? Well, motion capture is used when you want to have some realistic animation uh, and only that. <laughs> Look out! Ah! Keyframe animation, it push you to understand what happened in the body, how everything worked together to have like this feeling of natural and believable animation. Yeah, and it's... also it's about like the, the style of the show. It's just, it's semi-realistic, but it's not fully realistic. We try to keep something uh, really uh, handcrafted. Animating is like acting out the characters, you know, it's, it's about performance. When I saw the, the style of our game, it was something like I was, I want to try this kind of animation because it's really different from the, the cartoonish style I used to, to be in. And uh, after working for so long in the industry, I wanted to, to challenge myself. To be honest, Echo is the kind of character I loved to see when I was a kid. Echo? One of the first dialogues you had with Bai, I arrived with something completely different from the board. And Bart was like, oh, I didn't thought about this this way, but it's interesting. And it was the same with Christian. I, I tried something like he was a little bit pissed and walking slower and, and just making with the face and giving a, a small attitude, not like a snake, but like this kind of movement to say, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the one controlling the, the, the stuff. So we made like a shot like that. The animator, when we, he was assigned the shots, did shoot himself 
in order to get some references. And that what gives us the realistic look and the live action feel. We, we, do, we do work a lot with references. We go in the, uh, in the reference room, we shot ourselves, we try to, to pretend and be the character and be in the right emotion. Why aren't you playing with the others? Why aren't you playing with the others? But the video reference is really something that helps you capturing something natural. Sometimes like you, you got a shot to do and you got an idea in your head and you can probably like just go straight into the computer and, and do your stuff and it will work. But if you go in, in a ref room, you start recording yourself, you, you may end up having like some like little accident that you do that can be really interesting. And you're like, okay, that's that's pretty cool, let's dig into that. Remind me why we bother with this dump. How can I say no to such an auspicious offer? You feel like you're inhabiting those different characters in a way? Well, you, you, you have to. <laughs> when you see one second of, of, of an episode, like an animator spent a day on it. So if you work, on an expression, on, on, a, on a feeling, on a shot that, that lasts for one second, you're gonna spend a day having that feeling in your mind, like try to reproduce it. <laughs> it's, it's not rare to have like, you, you go around the animation department and you can see like people like doing like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like this, 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 just this face where you're yeah. just like acting what, it's, that's the common thing in animation really. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to be part of this sequence particularly. Like there is a lot of crazy sequence, but this one was the one for me. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, when I heard that I was working on it, it was like a, it was like a dream. Like, <laughs> and I was really happy because I had the slow motion moment, and I uh, I have the opportunity to work with my son to make the the the, the movement of Echo Young. He's uh, nine years old, almost ten. We came here to, to shot this scene where Echo is running slowly in slow motion. Yeah, it was so cool to share that with him. It was like a moment, father and son, and I think I, I hope you will remember uh, all his life. <laughs> it's only experimenting for for now with painting. Ah, it's about to, to be tested. <laughs> For the glitches, we draw them directly on the computer. And for this one, we are searching for another kind of process, uh, more realistic. 2D effects are very specific at Fortiche because, you know, it's a Fortiche trademark, you know, doing 2D effects on CG animation. They're just like traditional animators doing uh, FX uh, frame by frame. Uh, donc ici, uh, on a uh, le, le, le pouvoir que Jace crée avec son marteau. And drawing, frame by frame, and layers by layers. But sometimes it's very difficult to follow the camera movements, which are very interesting. This kind of shot is really difficult to do because the camera is a little bit hard to follow. I think I worked something like three weeks on it. Depuis une dizaine d'années, on fait des les FX 2D pour les teasers de Riot. Sur le, le teaser de, de, de présentation de Jinx, donc qui s'appelle Get Jinx, on a découvert le style Fortiche. I have this feeling all the time when I'm watching something in progress and I'm like, we get to the animation phase and I'm looking at the animation, I'm like, how are you going to make this better? You know, how is this scene going to feel more immersive? You know, how, how, how are they, how are they going to possibly, you know, level this up? When everything is done, animation, background, simulation, 2D effects, we render it and we composite it. We come at the end of the process and uh... Basically, we just will take all of what the other department has created and then we put it together. 
because the background is paint, there is actually no light used uh, for the characters. We have to uh, to adapt the characters to the background. So when we see like uh, red light on Sevika and it's changing for the green light when she is going further, actually, technically, nothing is there. We have to create everything from the background, from what we see in the background. So yeah, we go from here to here. Positing at Fortiche is one of their signature crafts, and it's just a, a straight mystery box for me. How do they paint the light? I cannot tell you. <laughs> it's not that I'm, you know, hold back anything, but I so, some of the process I don't even understand. So <laughs> I don't know if I can show you. <laughs> yes, yes, it's kind of secret. <laughs> The way to light, it's uh, different. It's a uh, uh, special, uh, fortish uh, way. <laughs> but it's so simple. When you know the trick, you say, ah, <laughs> <laughs> so simple. <laughs> it's not a magical trick. It's just no. artists and people who are doing beautiful things. The real magic is on the <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Because of their handcraftedness and their, the painterly look, it gives us this, this timeless look that I think even when the technology evolves, that this will still feel lasting. You know, in the same way, I think I can go back and watch like the Disney animation like uh, uh, Bambi or, you know, like Cinderella and it's timeless. It doesn't age because, because it's, 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 it's handcrafted. Nothing is round in the show. If you have a glass, if you see this glass, is not wrong because a drawing is it's not perfect. You know, if you see the eyes, you know, the pupils. The pupil is not wrong. Except the gemstone. This is the only moment where there is a, a sphere, perfect sphere. Okay. Et le, le, le l'idée un peu c'est 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 d'avoir chaque image comment dépasser la qualité que peut produire un dessin animé 2D classique. Et ça, la 3D nous le permettait. Et, et c'est d'avoir que chaque image, chaque pose qu'on qu fait, ça reste un, un peu une, une, un concept art, une, une belle illustration. There's just storytelling happening at every phase and every level. Alex, Alex on the other side of the ocean. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> so Ray, I think that was a, a great first read. Can the second violins play that a little bit softer? I've never worked on a show before where the musicians are such an integral part of everything. These are like the, this is the music team, you know, so they wrote all the songs. They've been spending, what, three, four years on the music for this show? like. Every TV show, sometimes you get three, four weeks for an episode to do music. I would say that Arcane is all the muscles that we've grown as a company in the music making craft combined. I really believe that what we're doing with music in Arcane season one has never been done in entertainment, period. 